So today we're going to find out why some people go to church, gatherings, meetings, small group meetings, whatever it is, and they get nothing from that, but others go and their lives transform, okay? We're going to capture this in Luke chapter eight. Jesus Christ told his disciples a parable and he said there are four types of hearts. Four types of hearts, okay? We're gonna talk about these four types of hearts. Whew. He said, when the word of God is spoken, it falls on four different grounds. There's a potential for it to fall on four different kinds of soil. So your heart is soil and the word of God is a seed that goes into that soil. Now the condition of that soil is your responsibility. I'm gonna talk about the four types of soil or grounds that the word of God could potentially fall on. We have the path, rocky, thorns, and the good and noble heart. We all want the good and noble heart. Okay, let's address the, the path first. You can find this in Luke chapter eight. The path, the word of God goes forth as a seed and it falls on the path. It gets trampled upon and the enemy, birds come and steal the word of God from you. What is happening is it is exposed. Everybody can say it. And the enemy comes and takes the word of God from your heart and takes off. The result of that is unbelief, which is a sin, according to Hebrews, and then becoming unsaved. Okay? You hear the word of God, but the devil comes and steals it from your heart, bringing you into unbelief, which is wicked and a sin, and in result, you fall away from the gospel, okay? Second type of heart is a rocky ground. When the seed falls on the rocky ground, it comes up, but there's no moist moisture, there's no water, there are no roots, so it withers. So these people receive the word of God. They are hearing it. They are listening to these videos. They have joy. They're like, I love it. That's for, that's for me. That's my confirmation. But there are no roots. And Psalms chapter 1 verse 3 tells us that those who meditate upon the word of God day and night shall have roots that run deep to the river, the leaves do not wither, okay? So these people with the rocky hearts, they receive the word of God until testing takes place and they cannot endure the testing and they fall away. They too fall away. All right, third type, the one where the word falls among the thorns. In their heart, they have, they are worried about the pleasures of the world. They are worried about life's difficulties. They are worried about riches. They hear the word of God, but life is pleasures, riches, and worries choke that word out of them. The thorns choke the word out of them. What happens to them, the result of that, the word of God being choked out of them, is that they never mature. They, they stay babies. They stay newborn babies in the spiritual realm. So anything happens to them, they're getting beat up day and night. This happens, that happens. They just can't mature because it is through testing that we mature. It is through testing that we learn to approach things differently. Each person in this Bible that overcame was tested. You are not an exception. Even Christ Jesus was tempted in the wilderness. Okay? Testing is necessary to pass. Testing is necessary for elevation. Testing is necessary for you to learn, retain what you learn, and persevere. 
it builds character. Amen. Now, the fourth soil that we're going to address is a good soil, the noble soil. The word of God comes as a seed and falls on good soil. This soil yields a crop. So these people hear the word of God, retain what they heard, and they persevere. This aligns with Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Those who hear the word of God, retain it and apply what they heard, are likened to a wise man who built his house on the rock. When the fires came, the storms came, the winds came, they were able to stand because they, they were rooted on the rock of ages. Amen. I'm going to give you examples about the different hearts. Okay. Because my question was, why is it that when you teach some people, they get so much out of it? They produce a crop, 30, 60, 100. It's because of the heart. It's two people can hear the same message, the same teaching, and one can get so much out of it and the other gets nothing out of it. And as a person, you're trying to figure out whether your approach was um, difficult. Like, was this, is this a hard concept to grasp or what's going on? Let's talk about examples that the host gave me, okay? The first example, remember the first heart we're talking about is a path where it get the, the seed gets trampled and the devil comes in the form of a bird and takes it from that person's heart the example is john chapter 6 verses 66 john 6 66 jesus christ that's the context jesus christ is preaching to his disciples and saying your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness but i have come Bread from heaven. I'm the living bread. I'm the bread of life. If you eat of my flesh and you drink of my blood, you have eternal life. I'll be in you. You'll be in me. You never, whoever eats of my body will never hunger. Whoever drinks of my blood, whoever believes in me will never thirst. So he's explaining this concept and it's a bit complex for the people to understand and some disciples say what do you mean if we eat of your flesh and you drink of your blood and he explains that the words that i speak are spirit and life so it's explained that what i'm saying is spiritual not physical body and physical blood he expounds on that concept but they say listen verse 6 to 6 of john chapter 6 from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. They deserted him because the word fell on the path and was stolen by the enemy. Second kind, rocky, where this person receives the word of God with joy. But when testing comes, they are pushed between rocks. They can't do it. They fall away. Peter is a perfect example. Peter when he was put to the test, do you know this man? He, re he denied Jesus Christ three times. But there is hope because Jesus Christ reconciled with him. He redeemed him by saying, Peter, Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? And each time Peter replied, yes, I do. You know that I love you. And he said, feed my sheep. So I believe they were reconciled through that interaction. Amen. The third person or third heart is thorns. You are bombarded with, you're so caught up with the riches and pleasures of this world. Judas Iscariot. For money, he betrayed Jesus Christ. Riches, worries, and pleasures were within his heart. The fourth example with good soil, praise the Lord, is you and I. We come to service. We come to learning and videos, whatever, with pure hearts and noble hearts. Amen. 